Hey, welcome to my vlog and review for round seven of the 2017 MotoGP season, Catalonia, back on Spanish soil. The weather was hot, hot, hot for the weekend. The track temperature was 50 degrees on race day. That's hot enough to fry your breakfast. So let's see how the riders got their eggs cooked. P1, Andre Davizioso takes his eggs over easy with a second helping of first place. What a surprising follow-up to his win in Mugello. I'll tell you, Italian racing fans must be smiling ear to ear right now. Not only did Davizioso and Petrucci get on the podium in Mugello, but Davizioso follows it up with a second straight win on that Ducati. On top of that, if you're watching World Superbike, Marco Melandri, another Italian gentleman, just put the Aruba IT Ducati at the top step in Mizano. So Italian racing fans certainly getting their money's worth this year. I guess the only thing that could top it off for them would be if Valentino Rossi won the world championship. But we got a ways to go to see whether that's going to happen. But for right now, you know, the Italian fans got to be really happy. But I think the bigger takeaway from all this now is that, you know, with Davizioso winning two in a row and with Jorge Lorenzo seeming to find his way race by race on that Ducati, putting in more and more consistent performances, it seems like the Ducati is now a serious championship contender. Now, maybe that has to do with the fact that it seems like this year with the tires that there's less consistency team by team, race by race, weekend by weekend. It seems that every weekend there's one team that, that's having more problems or one team that seems to have a bit of an edge. And I think that's thrown in a whole new level of, you know, unexpectedness. Teams aren't necessarily sure going into each weekend exactly how their performance is going to be. I think it's probably frustrating for the riders and teams to try and figure those things out, as you could tell by Vinales this weekend. But I also think it adds a certain element of unexpectedness. And, you know, for the, from a racing perspective, that kind of anything can happen element, uh, you know, plays a long way. So... Maybe it's the Ducati. Maybe they've made the improvements. Maybe it's the other teams as well. Maybe it's the tires. I'm not sure. But that Ducati is definitely looking like a championship contender. And it's Davizioso leading the charge. P2, Mark Marquez takes them sunny side up with 20 beautiful points after a rough, rough weekend for the world champion. You could say that the race day performance was the silver lining to the rest of Marquez's weekend. He had a horrible free practice session. He crashed five times throughout the course of the weekend. And after the last one, he just threw his hands up in the air and walked away. That being said, he did go on to qualify fourth. And after all that, Marquez said, he said, I'd rather crash four times in practice and qualify fourth than crash zero times in practice and qualify 10th. So a little insight into the mind of a champion, how he prioritizes things. Either way, after the weekend, the 20 points, Marquez has got to be smiling. Glad he walked away, still in contention. You know, he can't afford at this point to make another mistake. So Marquez walking on a wire right now, but he had a good performance this weekend. Let's see if he can carry it through an Assen. P3, Danny Pedrosa takes them poached with just a touch of vinegar. The odds were on Pedrosa to win this going into it, given the high temperatures and the fact that tire life was going to be such a concern. Pedrosa, with his small stature, is able to nurse and conserve those tires for the race distance. And he did lead the race for the middle eight laps. But at the end of the day, he couldn't hold off Davizioso and Marquez. Either way, it's a nice third place podium for Pedrosa. He keeps himself in that championship hunt, only 27 points behind Vinales and one point ahead of Valentino Rossi. So overall, a good weekend for Pedrosa, but I'm sure he's going to want to improve moving forward. P4, Jorge Lorenzo gets a nice soft boiled egg. You know the kind that's perfect for dipping your toast into? Jorge led the first five laps of this race right out of the gate. And then, just like in Mugello, he started to fall back down through the pack, down to eighth place. But then, unlike in Mugello, Jorge clawed his way back up to fourth place, the poor man's podium. But another awesome performance by Jorge, showing that race by race, he is figuring that Ducati out. He's got to be watching Davizioso win the last two GPs. And the message that I think Jorge is going to be taking away from this is simply, the Ducati can win. The Ducati is a bike that can win GPs. And that's really the only thing that Jorge needs to take away from that. Another great performance, not quite in the championship hunt due to his rough start, but certainly making headway on that Ducati. P5 and P6, 
Zarco and Folger respectively and respectfully, French Tech 3 team ordering up a nice fluffy quiche with a side of sauerkraut. It's an odd combination. I think that Folger thought going into this that this was going to finally be his race to outdo his teammate Zarco. Folger looked great all weekend. He had great race pace. And unlike in past races, he got, a, he got a decent start to the race, probably his best one all season. It's been his Achilles heel the first three to five laps of the race. He outdid himself this time in that area, definitely an improvement, and almost beat Zarco. If you don't think he wanted to, Folger came out of the very last corner of this race, almost sideways, trying to get drive to beat Zarco down the straight to the line. Just missed it by a cat's whisker. But, you know, the French Tech 3 team looking great all around. Hervé pontrell has got to be smiling, wondering what he did to deserve all this. And I don't know what he did, but I hope he keeps it up because it's awfully entertaining watching these guys race. And it's worth noting that this is the third weekend, in my opinion, out of only seven race weekends, where that 2016 version of the M1 Yamaha that the Tech 3 team has seems to outperform over the course of the weekend the newer 2017 version that the Factory Yamaha team has. Now, I'm sure it's not straightforward, and, and it seems to be fair that each team seems to be having difficult weekends as, as the championship goes on. So it might be more to do with tires, maybe the slight camber change that Michelin added uh, when they redid the front tires for this year. I'm not sure, but, you know, it could be a case where Yamaha maybe tried to take a step forward and, let's say, drive out of the corner, maybe kind of hampered their entry into the corner a little bit. You know, it's, it's a delicate balance like the pebble in the pond theory where, you, where you, you change a little thing and you get ripples that you don't expect. So it may be a case of that. Either way, I'm sure the uh, factory back in Japan is uh, crunching all the numbers, trying to figure it out, and hopefully going to be bringing something a little more useful to the upcoming Catalonia test. P8 and P10, Rossi and Vinales, Team Yamaha getting their eggs scrambled on the hot Catalonia track. Rossi, for his part, said that he probably could have used an extra week off to recover. That being said, in my opinion, I don't think that his condition was the biggest obstacle that he faced over the course of the weekend. That factory Yamaha having all kinds of problems in these hot, slippery conditions. And, you know, for Rossi, it's a bit of a mixed bag because on one hand, he drops from third to fifth in the championship. On the other hand, he's actually two points closer to Vinales in the lead. So a bit of a mixed bag for Rossi. Vinales, on the other hand, well, the look on his face says it all. He drops from a 27-point lead to a 7-point lead over Davizioso, so a much worse outcome for Vinales. And you finally saw Vinales getting his uh, feathers ruffled just a little bit over the course of the weekend. Definitely frustration kicking in, trying everything, not able to get that race pace up to a decent level. You know, it's got to be frustrating for him. This is his first year where he's really fighting for the championship. You know, it's a lot of pressure to begin with. But then to add on that, the fact that you don't know going weekend by weekend how your bike's going to perform. Definitely frustrating for both Rossi and Vinales. Let's hope that the factory team has been crunching all the numbers and they're going to be bringing them something to this Catalonia test that can help reverse uh, some of whatever they've done over the course of uh, changing up the bike for the 2017 season. So that wraps up my vlog and review for round seven of the 2017 MotoGP season. Davizioso on the Ducati, coming back for seconds. Don't forget, the next race, June 25th, the TT Assen circuit in the Netherlands. Maybe some cooler conditions will help out that temperamental Yamaha. Top five riders within 28 points. We're almost halfway through the season. I can't believe it's this close. Leave me a comment. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think. And let's look forward to more MotoGP.